Hey everyone, I would like to now talk about hypothesis testing. And before I get into uh, how to handle hypothesis testing in R, I would first like to talk about the basics of hypothesis testing. So hypothesis testing is another common form of statistical inference. The previous form I'm referring to, of course, being confidence intervals. In hypothesis testing, our objective is to decide whether we have enough evidence to reject a null hypothesis, which is a statement about a population distribution that a priori we believe to be true or assumed to be true, often with the goal of proving it false, in favor of an alternative hypothesis, which is a statement about the population that is in disagreement with the null hypothesis. Uh, I'm usually denoting the null hypothesis with H0 and the alternative by HA. Uh, generally, when starting out statistics, hypothesis tests are statements about parameter values. So these tests are going to take the general form H0 theta equals theta0, um, and the alternative is one of these possible, uh, one of these three. It's going to be one of them, but I've written down all three as possibilities. So the alternative will be either theta is less than theta naught, theta is greater than theta naught, or theta is not equal to theta naught. All right. These are the tests that I'm going to focus on today, but I should probably note that there are hypothesis tests that do not look like this. For example, the null hypothesis may say the data comes from a normal distribution. The alternative says that the, the null hypothesis is false. So the data is not normally distributed. Uh, that is not a test that is stated in the form of a parameter, and yet it's a perfectly valid hypothesis test. Okay, so in statistical testing, what we do is we compute a test statistic and use that test statistic to compute a p-value, which represents... And we're going to be very precise about this because this is something that will make statisticians very angry if you get it wrong. A p-value represents the probability of observing a test statistic at least as extreme as the one actually observed if H0 were in fact true. Basically, a p-value is a quantification of how um, contradictory to the null hypothesis a test statistic is. If the test statistic is... Uh, is very contradictory to the null hypothesis, which we usually uh, understand as being a very small p-value, then we would reject the null, hypothesis, the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. Um, otherwise, we will fail to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. Now, that said, we are not accepting the null hypothesis as being true, we are simply saying that there isn't enough evidence to conclude that the null hypothesis is false. The null hypothesis could, in fact, be false, um, and yet you fail to reject it. Um, what exactly a small p-value is, is determined by what's known as a level of significance, which is typically denoted by the letter alpha. If your p-value is smaller than alpha, you will reject the null hy hypothesis in favor of the alternative. Common values for alpha include 0.05, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, and 0.01. Not 0 0.1, sorry. Um, the smaller alpha is, the more difficult it is to reject the null hypothesis. Now, uh, there is nothing special about any particular value for alpha. This is a parameter that you just set at the beginning of your study to attain certain error rates. Um, as mentioned before, uh, we could, in fact, fail to reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is in fact false, this is known as a type 2 error. Um, and uh, we never actually say that the null hypothesis is true. We only say that we don't have evidence that the null hypothesis, or don't have sufficient evidence that the null hypothesis is false. Thus still allowing for the possibility of a type 2 error. A type 1 error is rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually true. Uh, traditionally, the type the type 1 error is viewed as being more severe than the type 2 error. Uh, this is more a traditional viewpoint. Uh, there may be situations where the type 2 error is actually worse than type 1 error, and that depends entirely on the context of the uh, of, of, of in, uh, the context under which inference is being done. So the probability of a type 1 error is alpha. That is the interpretation for what alpha is. So you set your alpha value... 
to specify some type 1 error rate. And it's possible that your type 1 error rate isn't exactly alpha, but at least it's close to alpha. Um, alpha should be understood as... <coughs> excuse me, um, as uh, controlling the type 1 error rate. So you can make your type 1 errors uh, very small by choosing small alpha. That said, if you're going to make your type 1 error rate small by making alpha small, then you could, in fact, be increasing your type 2 errors. Uh, the thing about type 2 errors is that the type 2 error is... Reject the null is failing to reject a false null hypothesis. If the null hypothesis is false, then the true value of theta is going to be theta a, which is not theta naught. It is not equal to theta naught. So therefore, the probability of making a type 2 error depends on what the actual value of uh, the parameter is. And if the, true if the parameter value is actually close to what we hypothesize on the null hypothesis, you should expect that it's a very difficult to reject a null hypothesis in such a situation. It's very difficult to detect that effect. Um, therefore, you're quite likely to make um, a, a type 2 error. On the other hand, if your theta a is very far away from the, from the null hypothesis, that is, the truth and what you hypothesized under the null are very different from each other, then the probability of a, of a type 2 error should actually be rather small. So... This is how uh, the type 2 error actually works. And thus, there is no, no one type 2 error rate, but rather a type 2 error function, which we view as beta, or we're calling beta, and it depends on the actual parameter value. Uh, some facts about uh, beta is that beta of theta naught is equal to 1 minus the significance level, since this represents reject, uh, failing to reject the null hypothesis when the true parameter value is theta naught well if that's the case since we've chosen our null hypothesis uh, or since we have uh, chosen our our test so that rejecting um, the uh, null hypothesis when theta is theta naught is going to be alpha then that means that not rejecting the null hypothesis when the true parameter value is theta naught will be one minus alpha uh, rather than talking about uh, this type 2 error rate for theta a sometimes uh, statisticians prefer to discuss the power of a test rather than the probability of a type 2 error. It's The relationship between, is act, between the two is actually quite nice. The power of the test at theta a is 1 minus beta at theta a. So pi theta a is equal to 1 minus beta theta a. Beta theta a. Man, what, what a mouthful. Um, uh, the power of a test represents the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when theta equals theta a. Thus, the power of a test at theta naught is equal to your specified significance level alpha. So the power function very nicely ties together the notions of type 1 and type 2 error rates. Uh, so as with confidence intervals, R has many functions for handling hypothesis testing. Uh, you've in fact already been seeing a lot of these functions. T-test, uh, prop test, binom test, all this stuff is meant for hypo excuse me, hypothesis testing. So we're going to revisit those functions uh, but we're also going to look at how you would perform a hypothesis test, quote unquote, by hand. That is not just using some uh, function that you feed a data set and then it gives you a report, including the results of a hypothesis test. We're going to show uh, how we compute test statistics and p-values and all that stuff uh, in a more manual way, which, of course, you would do if you didn't have on hand a function for uh, for a hypothesis test of interest to you, and I can promise you that there are some uh, hypothesis tests out there for which there isn't a corresponding R function. Uh, it, it might be a very novel method or something. Uh, so um, it's still good practice to see uh, how you would go about such testing in R by hand, basically using R as a glorified calculator. All right, so that will be the subject of the next video. Until then, have a good day.